Do I really have to comment on girlfriend's Instagram posts? Need opinions. I've, 24M, been with my girlfriend 22F for about 6 months now. Everything has been going great so far. This is my first actual relationship just to be clear. So a lot of relationship things I'm learning still. She posted a recent Instagram post, and when I didn't comment on it, I liked it though, she texted me asking why I didn't comment on it. I told her I liked it and but didn't comment on it, and asked her if I had to. I'm not really a social media person and not really active on anything else except for reddit she is very active on social media and loves posting pictures she got a little mad that i didn't do it the first time i was a little clueless as to why she was mad but i left a comment on it anyways i'm not really sure what i did wrong my friends said that's an expectation now and i should try to do that now this may seem incredibly trivial but my question is do i need to do this going forward since i'm in a relationship now that's the dumbest fucking thing I've heard today. She sounds super immature. You don't need to comment on every post, but it's a nice thing to do. I don't understand most of these replies honestly. I just explained that you didn't realize leaving comments under her posts was important to her, but you'll remember going forward. If she's expecting an essay every time she posts, that could be a problem, but I can't see any issues right now that suggest that. A simple fire emoji slash heart emoji slash on your gorgeous, in your texting style, can go a long way. If you really want to talk about it with her, think about what you actually want to know. Is she insecure about her body? Do her friends make her think she needs you to comment under everything? Does she feel like you're romantic slash compliment her often? Don't assume any of these are the case but just a little thing to think about. Good luck. And if this relationship ends, your next girlfriend may have a different preference. You can't really paint all people broadly when thinking about affection. People are allowed to have weird needs. They are allowed to express them to their partner, but respectfully, and with consideration. The partner, in turn, has the right to turn them down if it makes them uncomfortable. Obviously, the issue here isn't so much what she's asking for, which seems to be validation plus you publicly marking your territory. If it doesn't comprom your core values and beliefs, then I'd recommend doing it. It's always nice to see your partner happy at no little cost to yourself. The problem is that she expects you to anticipate her needs and fulfill them, even when your baseline, normal behaviors indicate otherwise, and gets mad at you when you don't fulfill these unvoiced needs. That is not healthy. I had an ex who did this, and I tried to keep up with her demands, but I always fell short, I didn't do things right, or I didn't know how to compliment her in the right way, or I said problematic things. It was exhausting. I hope that this is just an aberration and not a pattern, because boy are you in trouble if it's the latter. Remember, there's a sea of difference between hey, honey, I really like it when my partner does X, so could you please do that? And something like wow, that is so basic. How do you not know this? The latter option is not okay. Start posting on the tractor forum and ask why she doesn't comment on your posts. Personally, I think it's a bit immature on her part. But you guys are young so. I think a middle ground is just post a fire emoji on all of them. If she's got a problem with that it sounds like she feels insecure in the relationship or herself and is potentially trying to find validation and confirmation or comfort from you as her partner. If my husband said it was important to him that I comment on his posts in a tractor forum I would do it. Cause I love him and want to show him my love. Even though I'm deeply uninterested in tractors. Just because you don't value something doesn't mean it is without value. And sometimes we do things for our significant others because we want to make them feel happy because that's the fucking point of a relationship to be loved and give love it shouldn't be that big of a deal but if it's important to her i just try to do it it always makes me feel good when my boyfriend comments on my pictures he probably just wants to feel appreciated or like you're willing to show everyone else you think she's pretty or whatever i don't think you have to do it every time but if you love her and don't mind if just throw a comment around once in a while if it's something you're not comfortable with though she definitely shouldn't force you or start fights with you about it but there's no harm in commenting a heart or something on her posts you know
I, 28M, feel like my GF, 26F, has become selfish in bed. So my GF and I have a decent amount of sex, however, the problem is I feel she has just become a selfish lover. I love foreplay and I love making her feel good and at first she was the same way. Over time though she stopped trying to please me as much and seemed to really just focus on herself. For example, I love to receive oral and so does she. We used to trade off. But now she just flat out refuses and only expects me to give it to her. Meanwhile, we have also incorporated toys and other things into the bedroom at her suggestion. My girlfriend and I just had our four year anniversary recently and after some foreplay I told her I would really love it if we could 69 and she just kind of groaned and refused. I asked if she didn't like it, but she kind of snapped at me and said, just because you love it doesn't mean I have to. I don't hate it, oral, I just don't want to do it so I just dropped it. The problem is though this has been going on for a year now. I mentioned the list of things in the bedroom that we do specifically for her and that it would just be really nice if we could do something I want to. But then she just said she'll just stop asking for stuff in the bedroom then. I feel like it's not much to ask. But lately all sex has been is a lot of foreplay and toys for her. Then she just kind of lays there and has me do all the work during piv sex when before we both were pretty involved. Aside from that our relationship has been amazing and solid. It's just tough because I feel like the sexual component is really important. And I'm concerned as plans for engagement are set for later this year. But now am I'm shaky on it. I think she believes so long as I have somewhere to stick it, I'll be happy. But I want sex to be more than that. I just feel like she doesn't cares about my needs like I care about hers anymore. Am I being reasonable for being a bit upset about this? I don't know how to solve the problem without starting an argument at this point based off her previous reactions. Edit, holy shit, woke up and saw this blow up. I'm going to try and reply to what I can buy thank you all for the comments and advice. Unless something changes it will only get less and less about you. And she doesn't care. Is this the future you want? She sounds lazy and selfish in bed. If she won't even address the fact that your needs aren't being met. Try talking to her about this again, not when you're in the bedroom. If she still has the same reaction, you know where you stand with her. She's showing you that she only cares about getting her own sexual needs met. Up to you to decide it if you want to continue in a relationship with a partner that clearly does not care about you. Man, you have better think long and hard about getting married. If things are this bad now. Yeah I totally get it. I just really want to try and see if we can talk things through though. Aside from this, I love everything about us. And from seeing my own parents and friends parents go through divorce and families torn apart, the thought of marriage has always scared me. But my GF fixed that part of me and made me think, Wow I could totally picture us being married. So I really want to make sure that we've done everything we can to make this work before thinking about calling it quits. But I'm not going to kid myself either if it's just something we can't work on together. I don't want us to have the same ending as my parents. So all of what you've just said. Tell her that. Tell her how you feel that you feel like your sexual intimacy feels imbalanced, like you're giving and not receiving, and pleasure is not just about having somewhere to stick it in. That as much as she likes to be warmed up, you do too. That it's a give and take. Yes, she has the right to say no to sexual acts, but so do you. But then sex is gonna get very wham bam thank you mom. Ask her if something has changed. And if it has ask her how y'all can get back to where you used to be. Where it was about the exchange of pleasure and making each other feel good. Yeah I think no matter what happens I'm just going to have to come out and tell her. I just got worried cause her reaction last time wasn't what I expected at all. But there's no way I can keep going along like this and expect it will just get better. And I don't want to end up thinking marriage will suddenly answer our problems. It hasn't for the last year so why would it now? Thanks. I just really need to come out and say it. 
There's some great advice here but I just wanted to say that her response that she'll just stop asking for things in the bedroom really stuck out to me. It definitely seems like misplaced overwhelming emotions. Or it could also be manipulation, intentional or otherwise. Her actions and reactions don't indicate a partner who is willing to listen or care about how you feel. Agree, that fine. I will never ask for X or do X again as a response to a reasonable sexual interest conversation is downright childish. Or even cruel, if they are just using it to end a conversation about a partner's concern or vulnerability. Me, 28 meters, off a dream job, GF, 26, isn't having it. TL, doctor below. The time has come to make a choice. My partner and I have been together for 7 years, we met attending a cheap fine arts college and graduated halfway through the last decade. Since graduating I have worked extremely hard to make my craft my full time job, working numerous arduous gig jobs just to have the time to keep my hand in the trade as much as possible, and by gigs I mean common 13 hour days, and 116 I'll never forget. To say the least, I have worked very hard to keep practiced in my craft and to stay afloat financially. Backslash meanwhile I have been waiting for my call from the studio of my dreams after visiting it 6 years ago, and guess what? I got it in February. Hooray. I pulled my car over in the street and took a 45 minute phone interview on the spot I was glowing. I told my partner she could quit the job she's always complaining about and we could move 2500 kilometers away to a very small tourism town and start a family. She was not Gucci. She screamed no. I'm not moving away. What if we have kids? I won't have help from my parents, who live about 5 minutes away from us. She explained to me she likes to have the variety of shops and restaurants a big city provides, when in reality we never really go out besides the local pub. But she said hell no, this is home, and even I can feel that too to a certain extent. But I have told her for years that I don't want kids in this city, I want a more rural life and I want to work at this studio specifically. And so after hearing that she wasn't willing to ever leave the city I'm left asking, but who have you been dating for the past 7 years? Haven't you heard me say what I want over and over? Land, a place to grow stuff, a porch to watch the night air cool off on, a pipe to smoke, wood to chop, a dog, a cat, a full time job in my field, chickens, like come on. I'm an open book. Now if that all sounds impossibly perfect I believe it's better to have tall dreams and fall short than small ones that are certainly achievable. You'll go farther that way. I knew deep down when I told her she was not going to be stoked. After 7 years with someone you pretty much know how they will react to anything. But me leaving has been a sticking point in our relationship for some time. I'll explain, in college I was awarded a semester abroad which was hard for us, and now, every fall I go away for two weeks to teach. When I'm gone she's pretty much broken, she needs to have constant contact via text and a sobbing video call every night to tell me how much she misses me, fine, I can handle that, but these calls get to the point where I feel guilty for my success and for leaving. There's one more nuance that make this harder, she goes to bed at 9pm like clockwork and I usually travel west, so she's going to bed even earlier based on where I'm at. It could be as early as 6pm for me, which creates the same scenario every trip I go on, I end up teaching for 9 hours, scarf down dinner and shower because she wants to Skype before bedtime. 6 p.m., Skype my whole night away because she's gone off the rails crying. And then I don't go out, I don't see anything while I'm away, all because I was too busy tending to her. This has ruined a lot of trips for me that should have been nothing but good times, but I to ug ht it me ght get better if, after every stint away, after all the Skype calls, I came home the same loving man and built trust with her but it's not really gotten any better. I should note that I come from a poor family, that is still poor and suffering from mental illness. It's been my goal since I can remember to pull them up out of poverty. I don't make very much money on my art it's mostly some work abroad, 
exposure or ego achievements. But I'm just grateful to have one foot in my craft and another supporting me on minimum wage. I'm grateful because I have horribly internalized capitalism and believe I have the talent to bootstrap them and myself into a better life financially and mentally. I feel like if I don't take this job I will have to spend the next 5 years grinding my life away at gig jobs. I'm 28 like when the hell am I supposed to fit kids into this scenario? If I forego having kids I'd probably still end up self-employed after the time as that is my end goal but I'd be giving away the position for wanted for years. And it will haunt me like that ranger truck I didn't buy in high school because my ex GF talked me out of it. Seriously I can't see one without being like damn should abort that truck. So I know it'll mess me up. I'm worried I might not even like my craft after turning up this opportunity. If I take this opportunity, it's in June. I could start a family on the wage they want to pay me. I could help my poor family, and I will be able to practice my craft full time and eventually become self-employed under my own skill. In the past year foregrown my understanding of the craft immensely, so I feel that I have lots of momentum at the moment and that I can become one of the greats in my country. It's literally everything for wanted for 10 years, right on schedule. Hash how can I convince myself that I deserve this opportunity? After writing this I think I know how I feel but I could still use some support I think. Make me strong plaza. For left out a lot of details about what I actually do as an artist because my field is so small we can talk about each other by first names, and this is very personal content. What I do is also not very important as all art difficult to make a living on. Hashtag burner account but it'll respond to comments. I didn't see the rule about throwaways. Don't remove this mods. Im real. Im real. Thanks for reading. Too long didn't read. Backslash be me, an artist grinding for six years post college. BFA. Backslash dating same girl for 7 years backslash partner has made me feel bad for getting travel awards and other scholarship trips backslash move in together backslash get dream job offer backslash tell partner she can be stay at home mum or work, whatever she wants, but we have to move to a small mountain tourism town for the job. Backslash she declines and says she won't leave her 7 to 4 retail job or hometown for my opportunity backslash is now wanting kids from me even though I can't afford it on my current struggle wage backslash thinks maternity leave is that it's because her co-workers are all on it backslash I want to take this opportunity but him to be backslash to break up backslash make me strong plaza backslash how can I convince myself I deserve this opportunity extra source when I first visited the studio in question I turned down a job offer to pursue my new relationship with my partner update I have accepted the job. I think 7 years has been long enough and this is the perfect time to exit even though this will be hard emotionally. Tilda my plan is to tell her I'm going and if she wants to come willingly then great, but if she's going to kick and scream the whole time I'm leaving her here Tilda. I'm still reading through all of the comments and replying to a lot of them, your perspectives are helping me see my worth and to be strong for myself. Thank you everyone. Update, the plan 2.0. You're all right, I don't think I can take her with me or I'll never hear the end of how she moved for me and nothing else, and therefore I am responsible for her happiness. It might sound like four found resolution from this problem but all of your support is really helping to reinforce my strength. Thanks everyone.